Most conspiracy theories, especially the crazier ones, are meant to discredit the real ones. What's something you know to be 100% true that everyone else dismisses as a conspiracy theory? The art world is largely built around money laundering and tax evasion. This explains a lot of the really simplistic art pieces that sell for millions. You pay 10k for a painting, then give it to a college 3 years later. During that time, it went from 10k to 50k because f you, it's art. So you tell the IRS you donated 50k this year. And you can deduct donations from your yearly revenue and thus pay less taxes. The university plays along because they get free stuff out of the deal. Basically what money laundering is is that you invest your dirty money by operating a business and reclaiming your original money via the business's profit in order to avoid taxes. This can be applied to items of value as well. Buy a $100,000 painting that is less money you would pay in taxes, then go back and sell it. K-pop was created by the South Korean government under suggestion from the IMF as an extra exportable industry to fix its balance of payments. It really happened that way. I'm more surprised people or surprised governments get involved in cultural exports. Japan had some five-year cool Japan thing going on. Thailand sending chefs to American to popularize Thai food. It's a way to win the game, cultural victory. You want tourism and people buying your stuff, so you do whatever works. The government is actually watching everything you do. Now that doesn't mean there is some dude sitting at a computer looking over your internet history. But the government does have tons of information about you on a server somewhere. The paradox is that a lot of people in the government don't know they have it, and the rest don't know what to even do with it. Not everyone dismisses it, but the US government is still experimenting on its own citizens without their actual consent, but their implied consent. Fun fact. They legally can do this to anybody in the military, and did so to a group of marines testing gas masks against mustard gas or some other chemical weapon under the guise of preparing for Iraqi chemical weapons. Now on the surface this doesn't seem so bad, it makes sense. However, the guys suffered varying degrees of damage, and the doctors who treated them were, according to a few whistleblowers, ordered to remain silent, mostly due to the fact the doctors noticed that the injuries were not those of mustard gas, but a different chemical weapon. This happened in 2002 or 2003 I think, and a handful of the men died, with many more passing away a year or two later. I wish I currently had the source I got this from, but it's long since disappeared. Michael Jordan's first retirement was an unofficial suspension for betting on basketball. Not to forget the other part of the theory, that James Jordan was murdered due to his son's gambling debts. Not saying I necessarily believe it, but there's that part as well. Some agencies can turn on the microphone and relay the audio of most phones, even when you turn them off. Assuming you cannot remove the battery. This is why the president's phone as well as some other secure devices are supposed to have the microphones removed, and then have one plugged in when it's going to be in use. Previous presidents have begrudgingly accepted this practice. When retail employees go check in the back, they're actually just checking their social media for 5 minutes. If I tell you that we are out but you insist that I go check, I'll take a glance around and then stand around for a while, because hey, I know we're out. If I were to say that we're probably out, and offer to go look for you, then I'll definitely move boxes and check, and you'll maybe get lucky. Comes down to when we get shipments, how often something's requested, and how friendly you are about it. Flood insurance rates are a cycle to churn properties for big banks. We're in the very beginning of the bank accumulating property phase now. It goes like this. Flood insurance is cheap. Waterfront, flood zone, property values go up. Current stage of the cycle flood insurance rates start to creep up. They're currently going up 25% a year until they reach their true rate. Meaning, they'll keep getting risen until the banks get what they want. Starting to see this. People sell their flood zone properties because they become unaffordable i.e. you have a rental property that's clearing $250 per month, then your flood insurance goes up $100 per month, and it's going up next year, and the year after that. People will start selling, this hurts property values. This is where the banks clean up. Property prices drop so low that people can't afford to sell, so they have to short sell or sell for a loss. If they can sell at all, otherwise the bank forecloses. The bottom falls out of the market and prices plummet because insurance rates are too high, the banks accumulate thousands and thousands of these undervalued properties. Now, the banks have to sell these things. If only there was a way to sell these properties. Oh yeah, let's reduce flood insurance rates and give the market a boost. 
This is where the cycle repeats. A couple things to note, the big giant million dollar homes aren't really affected by this. The owners are usually wealthy enough to afford the flood insurance rates, or own the house outright and don't need to carry insurance. The banks and the government are basically the same entity in this circumstance. A lot of houses in flood zones are huge neighborhoods that just happen to be low-lying, and can be miles away from waterfront. So, poor neighborhoods get hit the hardest by this. There's a cabal of very wealthy and influential psychopaths who control a good chunk of world politics, new members are introduced to, or encouraged by their own peers to partake in, pedophilia. They end up doing that not just because they may be bored with their lives or enjoy hurting children, but also because this team building exercise in the guise of underage sex parties allows their friends to get compromising material on them. It is an initiation ritual aimed at building trust between everybody involved. If, almost, every member of the cabal has dirt on everybody else, then they surely won't rat each other out. This might also explain why Epstein got disposed of despite having been placed under police custody. Most conspiracy theories, especially the crazier ones, are meant to discredit the real ones. I've heard that the military encourages UFO conspiracies surrounding Area 51, because it's a testing site for experimental aircraft, and they'd prefer the rumors that spread around Area 51 to be complete lunacy about aliens rather than credible sightings of top-secret experimental stealth bombers or whatever. But I've only really heard this as rumors, never really seen any hard proof. The only reason why we are still in the Middle East is to harden our military so that if we go to war with another nation our troops have battle experience. I think this is what Russia is doing with Ukraine now too. Not to forget money. As the biggest weapons exporter in the world, we create a ton of weapons and war is very good business for arms dealers. Luckily for them, they sell to our military and have a lot of control over our government. Also having a military presence in a place with lots of oil means you can try to stabilize prices and create stronger relationships with the people who control the oil. The longer we're in war, especially ones with no end in sight and not many soldier casualties, a handful of people make a lot more money. Back in 2012 I flew back to the US via LaGuardia. As we started our decent, my husband, then my boyfriend, told me to look out the window. Loud as all all hell all I could say was holly hell there's a drone next to us. Woman in front of us whipped her head to the side and gasped in horror. As soon as she saw it, it went sideways and flew under and away. She got all in a panic and asked a flight attendant who assured us that we probably mistook something else for a drone. This thing was huge. 10 to 15 feet long? I've never seen one before and didn't know they were that big. Guys, the lady kept pestering the flight's attendant who had to then come back after speaking to pilot to refute what we saw. She kept saying that the military does not fly their drones this close to commercial flights. No one believed us. I'm from the good old USSR so I just got mad paranoid and kept my mouth shut. My husband would tell this story often. Friends sent articles confirming the pilot's take on things. And then around the reality winter time whistleblower releases, 2018, I ran across an article where the DoD admitted to have been doing this for ages while denying it to the public. At one point I felt like I imagined the whole thing. I mean, it was so surreal to see this drone feet away from our plane. It really shook me when it happened. I had nightmares for a while. That Disney owns an adult film industry, they just don't affiliate their names with it. I've told this to many people and look at me in horror like I just killed their child. I don't have a sinus source on this. This came up in a finance class years ago, and looking at it from a business perspective is not something to be amazed of. We're running out of antibiotics bacteria are developing resistances faster than we can produce new ones. At the current rate, we'll run out within the next 50 years. We've already exhausted the first ones we developed, like early types of penicillin. It's not all bad, though. If we rotate what we have, and invest in developing more, we can prolong the deadline indefinitely. Regardless, when your doctor tells you to take your antibiotics for the full prescribed duration, and to dispose of them safely at a pharmacy, you should listen. Source, Biologist. The Bachelor course on pathogenic bacteria covered this. Social media, especially Snapchat and Instagram, exist in part to make us more comfortable with events in our lives being publicly known, which in turn makes us okay with losing privacy from government surveillance. I'm not saying that was the original intent of those apps. I'm saying that in their current form they tacitly encourage people to be comfortable with being watched and having their lives recorded. The government basically encourages this because it suits them. 
will go extinct before we can ever colonize other planets. In one of Vonnegut's books, pretty sure it was Hocus Pocus, he posits that the true point of humanity's existence is to create a strain of bacteria robust enough to survive being jettisoned into space. And survive long enough to make it to a habitable planet and begin life again. Democracy is dead. Americans talk about their right to bear arms, and that's cool and all but if you need to overthrow a government by force you are not going to take down the US Army just by rallying a few thousand sympathetic freedom fighters. And you'd better believe that you're always the terrorist in this situation, because the media will lie and smear to protect the government and corporate interests. A lot of first world countries have an intentionally broken voting system, first past the post, which keeps the two largest parties in power. This means that if people vote for the best party for the job, their vote goes to waste, so they often vote for a much worse party that aligns with them on more issues than the other choice. This in turn further entrenches the two-party system. Two parties means fewer people to bribe when you need policies passed or blocked. There is an element of voting with your wallet here, in the sense that the more you line the pockets of politicians, the more your vote on an issue counts. And it's only the ultra-rich and large corporations that have this kind of money in the first place. The policies these companies lobby for inevitably serve to reduce their social and environmental responsibility and contribute to the still expanding income inequality in America and the UK and many other countries. Unelected corporations are effectively setting your laws and that is why they suck so much, and that is why every president or prime minister seems to do next to nothing for actual progress regardless of which of the two parties they belong to. But sure, you have a vote which you can use to elect one of two corporatist puppets, and you have a gun which you can use to rise up, except you won't and if you tried you'd be killed on the spot. That's not democracy, that's democracy theater. In the UK, we tried to change the voting system to one that would allow people to vote for their favorite party first and then rank other parties by order of preference, but it got shot down after a vote was called and the majority voted no. It seemed like all it took to convince most people to vote no, was for the media to say, don't do it, it will just end up voting the Lib Dems in. This also illustrates a problem with democracy even when we have it, people make uninformed decisions without knowing that they are missing vital information, and the media can manipulate this incredibly easily. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button to hear more uncomfortable stories about corrupt institutions and creepy powerful people. Share your own theories in the comments below, and remember, at this moment, someone could listen to you via your smartphone mic.